Chains album, Toward the Blues, topped the charts in 1971. Stan Rofe broke the chain on three years in. Uh, black and blue, I'll never forget. You know, the impact that that had when we find, when it broke through and was a hit. This was blues being played by not pop star looking people, you know. <laughs> this really was a revolutionary breakthrough. It proved that quality local music would sell. It also provoked Michael Gadinsky to set up his own company, Mushroom Records, which became an Australian music empire. Those guys made good albums. Uh, that, that was Gadinsky's great grace, that he formed a record label to record Chain, and then had the guts to record Mackenzie Seri and uh, people like that. He uh, turned down and we were shooting time. Well, fuck you. You know, you're making 10 grand a, a minute over the bar by the fact that we've got 3,000 people in the club that's had two men and a dog in it every Saturday night for the last five years, and you're going to tell us how to play and how to dress? Fuck you. Bang. Bram. From the moment a song started, you could feel it vibrating everything. You could feel it through the floor. All the floor used to drum with the bottom end of the whole thing. You could feel your clothes move when you hit a, a big E chord. But part of it, too, was to try and give to the crowd the same feeling you've got on stage. So you slowly built the stage style up so that you could get that intense, chew it up kind of sound out in the audience. And when you did, the audience really responded. The Aztecs had spawned a new breed of long hairs. Aztec fans weren't hippies, they were dedicated headbangers. And their war cry was, suck more piss. This was Thorpey's army. The music was off the street. The clubs that we played at were street clubs. The people we were playing to were working class kids. They weren't offended uh, by volume. They weren't as uh, offended by swearing. The cops were less than impressed with Billy Thorpe's new man of the people persona. I'd say shit or fuck, bang. I got pulled in, I don't know. I, I probably got locked up about 15 times, 20 times. So I thought, well, fuck this, you know. Uh, so I wrote a song called You Can't Go Around Saying Fuck on stage, and I opened the set with it. And I just used to say, well, let's get it over and done with. Well, the policeman said to me, you can't go around saying fuck on stage. So he's playing checkers, and we knew it was going to go down, and the fucking media, everybody was on to it. <laughs> he opened the set with, you can't go around saying fuck on stage. The cop was walked straight on and took him over to the watch house. <laughs> People I know think that I'm crazy. He said, my sergeant had a bug up his ass about you, and he was standing beside me, and he said, now listen, Venables, if that fucking says fuck one more fucking time, then fucking lock him up. Right, so that, you said I could say fuck on there. That was the attitude, that was the ridiculousness of it. <laughs>
say. 